my dream to see Europe. Next year I'll do it. Unfortunately, I've got a wife. Marston, sir! It's good to see you, old bean. Good to see you. And you too, Professor. Forgive me. I am in a state of remarkable agitation, partly due to standard narcotic impulses, but also due to the fact that I have finally solved the riddle that has tormented my mind these past eight years. What's that? The nature of the savage soul! What makes some societies great, like ours, and others, uh, yeah, not worse. I would never use a pejorative such as worse, but, 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 but lesser! Meaning? Meaning. What makes these beings less human than us? Closer to beast on the continuum between animal and god! You know, I argued with Fortescue at Yale about this. It caused a minor scandal. But I shall be proven right, sir! I shall! Mark my words! I shall show them all what civilization is all about. The redskins and the nubs at Yale. Come, sir! I have a way to say it. Both our desires. I will bring you, Vanderlint and me, the evidence of savages reverting to type! Come, sir! Where the devil is the stars? He should be here with the horses. Where is he? Where is he? My heart's beating like a drum. Try to calm down, Professor. Calm down! I I've never been so excited in all my life! Whoa! Hello, Professor. Mr. Marston. This is it! Years of research! What were you talking about back there? Where are we going? Nastas has set up a meeting. A powwow, I think they call it. A meeting of minds, of souls. Indians and whites, academics and criminals coming together to find a common understanding. Nastas, this fool's making no sense. Some of Vanderlyn's men have agreed to meet with Professor McDougal up at Bearclaw Cabin. Why the hell would they want to do that? I think they are interested to find out what conclusions a white man has reached on hundreds of years of culture and society from the comfort of his hotel room. Wonderful! Do you think I could ask for a skin sample from the soles of their feet? I don't think that's a good idea. I'm actually a little nervous, I have to say. <laughs> a touch of the old jitters. No, kid. It's no small relief to have the two of you along with me. I don't... Shoot it! Shoot it! Are you crazy? What's wrong with you? Whoa there! They 
certainly brought a lot of fellows with them. Well, let's get this started. I hope I don't have to smoke a pipe. Hello, gentlemen. We come in peace. Those words mean nothing coming from people like you. Look at what you've done to us. Look at us! We live like animals, scrabbling in the dirt. Well, I... Well, but I... Well, violence isn't the answer! Maybe you live in a different America than we. Men like Vanderlint will lead you to disaster. I think we've already experienced disaster. The likes which you could only imagine. Put your hands up! We come in peace! Do as he says, Marston. You call this a meeting? Excuse me? Your damn weaponry. This is not what we agreed to. You shut your mouth, you treacherous snake! <laughs> oh, shit! Damn it, Dutch! <laughs> Professor, get down, now! Got a life. They killed the stars! <laughs> Marston! You have to get us out of here! Just keep your head down! Well, we got the chance. Yes, let's get out of this hellhole and back to civilization. Come yeah. on. We should move quickly. There's plenty more where they My came God, from. I feel terrible. My head is pounding. Getting shot at will do that I to you. I completely drained. It's like my body is aged. Ten it can't be happening. Not again. Professor, let's get you back to Blackwater. I'd appreciate it if you would, Mr. Marston. I'm a shadow of my former self. Go. Well, I can safely say that, that was the worst experience of my life. I wish I could say the same. Blackwater. Oh, I will never talk ill of you again. Civilization in all its glory, Mr. McDougal. And am I glad to be back? I'm in dire need of a syringe. Something to clear the mind, restore the spirit. So you ain't planning on sleeping then? Okay. Sleep? My dear boy, I'll probably never sleep again. Thank the Lord. So much for a meeting of minds. Thank you, Mr. Marston. I could be boiling in a pot right now if it wasn't for you. Get some rest, Professor.
What a pleasant surprise, Mr. Marston. An informant just told us some interesting news. Our mutual friend, Mr. Vanderlyn, is about to pay call on his bank manager. What do you say to having a little financial discussion with the fellow? This way. Let's get up on the roof. We'll have a clear shot at them from there. That door is the only way in and out of the building, so cover it tight. Do you see those horses to the left by the building across the street? Dutch's boys hitched them there. They'll have to run that way to make their escape. Don't start shooting until they're out in the open. If we spook them, they might retreat back and hole up inside. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Keep your sights trained on that bank door. You really think you're better than the law? Nobody shoots until I say. Don't shoot! That man is a hostage! They shot him dead! They're coming out! Gun them down! They're in the window! Take them off! Take out those snipers in the window! Some people there. We can take them. Let's move. They'll cover the windows from up top. Shoot the lock off that door. Move in. Keep an eye out for some. Nice to see you, John. Hello, Dutch. How's Abigail? Well, I hope. Ain't seen her for a while. Cause you've been chasing me? Let the woman go, Dutch. Of course. Of course. How's your little boy? He ain't so little now. No, he must be what? 15? 16? Doesn't time fly? Don't adjust. It's over, man. Of course. Of course. I surrendered, John. 
You're the master now. I've been my master since you left me to die. We all make mistakes, John. I never claimed to be a saint, but equally, I never took you for an errand boy. Just trying to help my family, Dutch, by making compromises we all have to. Now let her go. It's over. You want the girl, John? Huh? You always were the romantic sort. You know, gentlemen, this man here, oh, he married a whore. Used to ride with us. We all had her. Oh, but he married her. And you know that makes him a better man than us. He's a better man. Have the girl, John. Easy, Dutch. She's a parting gift from me. God damn! I don't see him! What the hell happened in there? This is your fault, Marston! You got a gun too, Sheriff! You waited too long! Next time I'll just shoot the girl! That's enough! Come on, let's find the bastard! Get on your horses! I just saw Dutch make a run for it! Yeah! What happened in there? We saw Vanderlyn escaping from some men. He stole off with the bank manager in an automobile. Let's just say, Dutch ain't gone and got himself safe. He killed some poor woman. There's an old logging camp further down this road. It's been abandoned for years. My guess is that's where they're headed. Come on, follow me. So that's the great Dutch? What a role model. The man who made you who you are. I guess so. Has he changed? No, still the same crazy bastard he turned into. How was it seeing him after all this time? Did he tug on your heartstrings? He kind of reminds me of you. Violent piece of shit who went and confused himself with God. Isn't that sweet of you? And now you must kill him. Your side is chosen. My side ain't chosen. My side was given. I'd kill you a hundred times before I killed Dutch. If it was an option. Hallelujah! I think we're finally reaching an understanding, Mr. Marston. Who the hell are you fellas, anyway? All men or army? We are neither, Mr. Marston. But I have the authority over both. You bastards can't ever give a straight answer, can you? Look, that's Dutch's car. Hurry, you can't have got far. Easy now. Let's go.
Where's Dutch, Marston? He got away. Uh, scared to shoot him? Too much to handle? When the opportunity presents itself, I'll put a bullet in him, don't you worry. Won't like myself for doing it, but I'll do it. Ah, good man, good man. You know, at the end of this, you'll probably get a medal. I know I shall. Eyes open, miss. <laughs> Professor. Oh, it's you, dear boy. Come in, come in, and shut the door. <sighs> What's going on? You leaving? Yes, sir. Yes, I am, sir. Do you know? Do you know the thing? The thing that is vital, without which scholarship cannot proceed, sir. No, I don't. Not having a bullet in your flipping neck, sir. I am not cut out for this. No, not cut out for this at all. <laughs> nope. They're fucking savages! Savages! I think we all are. Not me, sir. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a professor at Yale. I write books. I do not deserve to die out here. Where's my tincture? Oh, yes. You okay, Professor? Oh, dandy, sir. Just dandy. Oh, great heavens above! Is that you, John? Hello, Dutch. <laughs> I think that's what they call two for the price of one out here in this wonderful place. Maybe so, Dutch. You and, and, and your friend there, the professor? We're gonna kill the both of you. 
Why you want to do a thing like that? I don't know. Sport, I guess. Fair enough. Oh. Why don't I come out there? We fight. Let the professor go and send your boys back to their families. Well, that, that sounds like a beautiful plan, John. Only problem is, my boys here, they already lost their families a long time ago. We aren't thieves, John. We're fighting for something a, a bit like you. Only we're fighting for an idea, not just for ourselves. That's beautiful, Dutch. You always were a fine speaker. I was. Now, would you kindly send that academic out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology? Please, sir, what are we going to do? I'm going to hand you over to him and watch him tear you limb from limb. What? I'm just kidding. We're going to run across the rooftops. Get you back to your ivory tower. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. We're still here. Come on. <laughs> Good day, sir. Uh, madam. Look here, sir. What is the meaning of this, this outrage? You two stay down and shut up. Do something! He's going to kill me! One more move, and he's a dead man! Onwards! <laughs> God, you took your sweet time! Christ alive, how many are there? Wake up! <laughs> Teacher gets it! Looks clear. Come on, then, let's make a break for it. The horses should be in an alleyway down here. Easy. Come on. Let's get the hell out of Blackwater! Come on! Giddy up! Head for Manzanita Post! I'm taking the first train out of here! This really couldn't have gone more horribly wrong! At least you got some good material for your next book! You know, I dreamt of documenting the last days of the Old West! The romance, the honor, the nobility! But it turns out it's just people killing each other! It always was, Professor! And the Old West ain't quite dead yet. Oh, I know, Mr. Marston. Believe me, I know. Please, I'll leave and never come back. I can't believe this. 
My research is complete! Much as I thought, there's no civilizing this savage land. I could have told you that for nothing. Ah, but they'll give me a prize in New Haven for this. <laughs> well, they bloody better. Well, goodbye, Mr. Marston. Best of luck, dear friend. So long, Professor. So long, sir. Forgive me, madam.
What's the rush there? What do you want, Marston? My family. I've done what you asked. <laughs> no, you haven't. This is the land of opportunity, and I gave you the opportunity to save your family, and you failed. How could I possibly reward you? Marston, you're a public menace. We should have had you killed. I wish you had. <laughs> but since you didn't, where's my family? Oh, spare me the noble savage fall on the sword tripe, will you? Oh, boy, it's nauseating. You don't wish to be dead. You're an insignificant creature desperately clinging on to life like the rest of the scum in this town. Yeah, I know, it's tough. You like Dutch. He's a charming fellow. He makes sense. He's like one of those nature writers from back east. Only he takes things a tiny little step too far. Rather than just loving the flowers and the animals and the harmony between man and beast, <laughs> he shoots people in the head for money and disagreeing with them. He's a goddamn killer. Now, I'm not a great intellect, but the metaphysical leap from admiring the flower to shooting a man in the head because he doesn't like the flower is a leap too far. So, I know it's easy. <laughs> you see, we, me and Archer, we're the bad guys. We enforce the rules. Now, while the rules may not be perfect, they're really not so bad. Exactly. What's the alternative? Yeah. See, I'll tell you what the alternative is. It's not complicated. It's about one man and his gun versus another man. <laughs> sure, civilization may be dull, but the alternative, Mr. Marston, is hell. And the way you enforce this civilization, this freedom for men to like or not like flowers or whatever in God's name you were just talking about is to kidnap a man's wife and son? Well, I know there's contradictions. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> As I said, I'm not a great intellect. Now, after the debacle with the army and the bank, we have to put Mr. Vanderlyn to rest ourselves. Will you help us? Do I have any choice? Now that you mention it, no. Then what was that pretty speech in aid of? I don't rightly know, but it sure felt good saying it. <laughs> Shall we, Mr. Marston? Let's go. Let's see if we can put this to rest once and for all, shall we? Go quick! Take a look at this thing! Have you seen this? It's got a gun on the back! Oh my lord, day! I've ever seen such a trick!
What's the word, Captain? We spotted one of Dutch's men about an hour ago. I think he took the bait. Let's get in position, then. Have your men ready to run him down, if you have to. Dismiss! Load weapons and get to the sandbags! Move! Are you ready to finish this, Mr. Marston? I guess so. Keep your eyes peeled. Targets on the horizon! Fire at will! Next time it's you! Where are they coming from? They're like cracks! Goddamn savages! Well, Mr. Marston, it seems like your mentor, Dutch, no longer looks quite so kindly to his student. That man is insane. So it seems. I think we need to get him before sundown. As you say, Captain. Otherwise, he'll be gone again. And what if I say no? <laughs> now, before I shoot you myself, let me just point out the obvious. The one person we have left that can appeal to Mr. Vanderlyn is the last person we know who knows him. Your wife. That won't be necessary. Mr. Ross. Captain. 
Let's go. <clears throat> Mount up, men. Let's move out. Go. soldier. Alright. 
Stay calm, mister. Marston, we'll take two men with us. The rest will stay here and take care of the wounded. They'll plant charges at the gate. You and I'll provide the cover fire. This is it, men. Let's get that gate down. Get ready to hold off their fire, Marston. Hold them off! We need time to set the explosives! If you don't stop that, you ain't gonna live! You can't change who you are. I ain't like you.
won't make it go away. That's where you're wrong. Hello again, John. Hello, Dutch. We gotta stop meeting like this. Sure. I got a plan, John. You always got a plan, Dutch. This is a good one. I don't doubt it. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change, can't fight gravity, we can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. Then give up, Dutch. But I can't give up, neither. I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see, then I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, they'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. That's their business. Our time has passed. Yeah. So at the end, you didn't have the guts to shoot him. The man's dead, Ross. Sure. Can I see your gun? Hmm. Oh, trust me. It looks better in the report that way. Where's my family? Uh, your wife was killed in a prison riot last week. So, I'm only joking, dear boy. They were sent back to that Scrabble ranch of yours in Beecher's Hope. They're quite safe and sound. They better be. Thank you, Mr. Marston, for everything. I know this wasn't easy for you, but I have to say, You've done your country proud. Yeah, exactly. See you around, John. Try to stay out of trouble. Come on, Archer. Let's go find somebody else we can annoy.
Abigail! Jack! Anyone here? Anyone home? Oh, darling. I never thought I'd see this day again. You no good hillbilly piece of shit! I thought you was dead! I thought you was dead, John, huh? Where you been? Where you been? You know where I've been, darling. You know! You saw Dutch, didn't you? Yeah, I saw him. And Bill? Yeah, I saw him, too. And you didn't go back to him? I left that life. Just as you left yours. How'd they treat you? Oh, I can take care of myself, John. One guard got funny on me one time, but I wasn't so ladylike, and he didn't try it again. Nor no one else. How's the boy? Oh, like you. And like me. Well, he's like a kid growing up without a father. That ain't fair. What is fair? Well, some trees flourish, others die. Some cattle grow strong, others are taken by wolves. Some men are born rich enough and dumb enough to enjoy their lives. Ain't nothing fair, you know that. We tried to change. I mean, ain't that what you're supposed to do? We did change. And it's over now. Jack! Jack, come here, boy. Hello, sir. Come here. How you been? Coyotes ate all the chickens and poachers took the cattle. I tried, Father. I tried. I know you did, son. I know. And don't you go blaming me, boy. Don't you go blaming me. I ain't blaming no one, old man, but since you're still alive, there's four mouths to feed. And no cattle. That's a nice way to greet somebody. Why don't I get to warm and tender embrace? Consider the fact I ain't put a bullet in you, your embrace, old man. You were supposed to look after the place. I did. Well, I did my best. Thing is, there was too many of them. Uh, I thought you was dead. I wasn't drinking. Hold your excuses until you figured out which one to use. Jack, go get your bags packed, boy. We got work to do. We leave in the morning. Go on. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Well, it's getting kind of dark now, but in the morning we've got to go get ourselves some more cattle. I've got friends at McFarland's ranch. It's over in Hennigan's stead who can sell us some. Now, Abigail, I hope you've learned to cook. Yes, didn't I say? Rather than some prison, they actually kept me incarcerated in a cooking school for young ladies. How do you do? All right. We should get moving. Sir, we 
got a decent ride ahead of us. I've never been to Hennigan's stand. How do you know these ranchers? I met them while I was away. The McFarlands are good people. We need folks we can trust right Make now. How? I was sick and they looked after sick me. Sick how? You sure got a lot of questions. I, I don't often get a chance to ask them. Was it a gentleman's complaint? What do they call it? The morning drip? Good God, boy, no! Where do you learn these things? Uncle told me about it. Well, he'd know, the dirty old fool. No, I just got weak for a while. Acted foolishly, got in trouble. Guess I was a little out of practice. Come on! Hey, Paul! What? Where were you all that time? Where'd you go? What'd your mother tell you? She said it was some kind of important government business. That's about right. Some people thought I owed them some favor. Why did they take us away? They thought it wasn't safe for you here by yourself. Those men harm you? Oh, no, they're okay. Some of them even told me stories. I think I'd like to be a government man one day. Or, or a politician. I'd rather you chose an honest profession. Well, like you, you mean? I know I ain't been the best father, Jack. I made some bad choices. But all that, that life, it's over now. Come on. Paul, huh? was it something to do with Mr. Dutch and Bill? Why you went away? Who told you that? Well, I kept hearing people say their names. That that's all. Yeah, I caught up with Bill and Dutch. We had some old business needed settling. There's the ranch. Come on, let's see if we can find Mr. McFarland. Easy. Easy. John Marston. Now, there's a face I thought I'd never see again. They'll have our public servants in Blackwater sent you back on another homicidal errand to protect and save us from Lord only knows what. Thankfully not, sir. I was hoping you might still be able to sell me some cattle. My boy, it would be a pleasure. Bonnie's out in the crowd now. She'll be more than happy to help you. <laughs> Take care now, Mr. McFarland. Good luck. All right, Jack. You're going to have an important job. Good Lord, do my eyes deceive me. A devil walks among us. I said I'd be back when this was all over, Miss McFarland. After the barn fire, you remember? Of course I remember. I just didn't believe a word of it. So, you've come for some cattle? Yeah, I'm finally starting up my farm again. Or, trying to at least. You'll be fine. You've been taught well. Come on, then. drink in my hand. Back to the riddles, I see. And Mr. Williamson? Let's just say Bill and I settled our differences. So, is this your boy? Yeah. Say hello to Miss McFarland, Jack. Hello. Ah, the arrogance of you. He gets a little fur on his lip and he thinks he knows best all of a sudden. <laughs> Must take after his father. your wife she's well I think we haven't had much time to talk yet come on looks like you got him under 
control. I best get back to Paul. Nice to see you again, Miss McFarland. And thanks you for call everything. Me funny, you don't. Jack, let's get him through the river. Whoa. That's all of them. Jack! Wait there! I'm coming! Whoa! You alright? You're not hurt, are you? No. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I wasn't scared, honest. I'm sorry you had to see that, son. Those men won't be stealing from anybody else. Alright. Let's round up the stragglers and get moving. Towards home. I know where I'm going, Paul. Son. Thanks, Paul. That's got to be more exciting than those books of yours. Uh, sure. If nearly getting killed is your idea of excitement. 
Nice work, son. We made it. You did real good out there. Go on. Hit your horse away from me by the stable. That's a fine herd we got ourselves. So we're ranchers now? Did a good job, son. Nice shooting. Thanks, Paul. Make a rancher of you yet. What you cooking? Same thing I've been cooking the past 15 years with the hope of poisoning you. Ain't working so well. <laughs> Not yet. I'll be honest, though. It tastes bad enough to kill a man. I never was much of a cook, but I did try to be a good wife. And you have been. <laughs> Given what we was and what we came from, I think we've gone and done OK. I look at Jack. I look at him, and I think we've been blessed. Maybe he can be something more. He's a good kid. He can be whatever he wants to be. He ain't gonna be no frontier gunslinger killing and running those gang, though. <laughs> that way's over. Railroads and government and motor cars and everything gone and done away with all that. And he ain't gonna marry no orphaned working girl running with a bunch of hucksters, neither. If he meets one like you, I hope he'll marry her. <laughs> Stop. For an illiterate gunslinger, you sure know how to make a girl blush. <laughs> God damn, Crows! John! You have got to go deal with them. They've broken into the silo again and are eating all the corn out from it. Of course, my angel. Wait. Get out of there! All right, all right. Go on! Scat! Shh. about that stew. Oh. <laughs>